Hey guys, what's up? Today, I wanted to check out the all new iPad Pro M4 versus the iPad Air M2. This is the 13 inch and this is the 13 inch. I cannot wait to get these things out of the box. I really want to see what these things can do. And so I plan on getting some local AI models installed on both of these. That's right, you heard me. I have found a way through an application, actually two applications, to get local AI models. So I wanna test out, see what they can do, kind of like what I did with the MacBook Air. So I wanna get the local models installed in these and see what they are really capable of. Apple keeps throwing at us that it's all about AI. And rumor has it, they're gonna be doing it in the cloud, but I'm really interested to see what they can do locally. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get the iPad Air M2 out of its box, see what's in there, probably not that much, and then we'll hop over to the M4 Pro, see what's in there, and then we'll do some testing with these iPads. So let's do this. So as I have mentioned in other videos, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over here. As I have mentioned in other videos, I love Apple's packaging. It is really well done and it's just really, really nice. I have never had an iPad Air, so kind of interested to see what this is like. I've only had the Pros, and then I had an original OG iPad. Um, and look at that. This is in the blue color, but I mean, that is a nice iPad. For comparison here, let me grab my iPad. So it looks like this is very, very similar to the iPad that I have, the M, uh, M1, in terms of size, which is interesting because you think about it, this is an Air, right? It's supposed to be super lightweight and super small, and I believe that the iPad Pro M4 is actually lighter and thinner than this air. So I'll hold these two up to the top down there. I don't know if you can see it. I wanna get the camera bump there. And I mean, that's almost exactly the same. Hold these two here. See this here. Oh, that, that's funny. They're magnetically attaching because of the, that's not gonna work then. There we go. Yeah, that is almost exactly the same width on that edge as my iPad um, Pro. 12.9 inch M1. So kind of interesting there, but we've got your basic iPad, really nice. Um, it does, it feels light. I don't, I honestly, it feels kind of like my 12.9 inch. And in here we've got our basic manuals as noted in several other videos, no sticker. Shame on you, Apple. We all love our stickers. Stop taking our stickers away. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll get this back in here and we get our 20 watt power brick. It looks like, yep. 20 watt power brick and a white USB-C to USB-C braided cable and ditch packaging. Very simple, straightforward. At least they give us a power brick. Um, took that out of our iPhones. That sucks. I don't like that, but yeah, so we'll go ahead. We'll power this up here for the first time. Uh, fingerprints on here. I don't have my cleaning cloth around here. And we'll just go ahead and turn it on. Get it at least open to the starting screen. I can tell you right now, it does not start up super fast when compared to everything else. So I'll go ahead and wait on that because that wants me to set that up. So let me put this back in its box here. So I will put this here. Where's my little tab? There it is. Okay, so I can put this in there. 
and I will get the apps installed for the local models for AI because I'm going to test the AI on this iPad Air. I want to see what can it do, you know, and then I want to compare it versus my iPad Pro M2 and then I want to put that up against the big boy, the iPad Pro M4, which I'm hoping does a lot better than these two and I expect it to. Again, we're dealing with 16 gigs of RAM. We're not going to be doing anything crazy, but we should be able to run at a Mistral like 7 billion parameter or maybe an Olama 3 7 billion, 7 billion parameter, something like that on all of this, I'm assuming. But we'll check that out as we get into the video more. So there's that. That's your iPad Air. I did pick up the Apple Pencil Pro. I have the Apple Pencil for my iPads. I like it. I draw every now and then. I'm not an artist. I just like to doodle around and it's really nice. This has the new um, haptic engine in it, which I'm super excited to check out and see how that works. And I believe my wife's M2 Pro or just M2 uh, or her pencil supports the hover, which this one supports as well. Another thing that I noticed was this packaging, I've seen lots of different um, designs on the front. So I got like a black one and I think I've seen a blue. I don't know if there's any others out there. Those are the ones I've seen, but it's kind of interesting that each one of these is kind of unique. Um, so that's something nice. So open this up here. We've got our basic manual and different papers. Throw that over there. And we've got our iPad pencil wrapped in this interesting um, paper type stuff. But I mean, it feels like a basic Apple Pencil. We'll check that out once we get the actual iPad Pro set up there. So let's take that. We will set that over here. And let's go ahead. Let's get into the big boy. I, I really am interested to check out that nano textured glass. Um, I will say that they did, or I was watching a video rather, and they said, do not put a screen protector on this, which made me a little nervous because everything I have has a screen protector, but they say that the um, adhesive that is on screen protectors may damage this screen. So that's something to note. Um, my goodness, this thing is light. I'm just, wow, just picking this up and so, so thin. I mean, again, let's grab my iPad here. This is the iPad Pro 12.9. Um, and I don't have this thing out of the packaging yet, but wow, look at that. I, if the top down picks that up, let me, let me get this out of here. I just, I'm amazed at how light this is. That is, I, oh, that is nice. There's that nano textured glass. Interesting, that is, I have a screen protector on this, so this is super slick. You don't really feel it. Okay. Yeah, that is different. So there's actually like a, a sound. I don't know. Let me see, get it next to the mic here. So I don't know if you can hear that in the microphone, but when you do it on this, like there's no sound at all. There's just nothing, it's smooth. Slick as glass on my, you know, glass screen protector, right? Um, duh. But with this nano texture coating, it's just, it does, it kind of sounds like paper and then has that paper um, feel to it a little bit. But very, very interesting. Also, I'll put this up aim this over here at my, my light over here on my left. And for comparison, I mean, I'm hoping that the top down is picking this up because my iPad Pro M1 is just, I mean, I can see every detail in that light. And aiming this over there, I mean, I can see it, but it's like matted. So I don't know, I don't know maybe aim it that way. I don't know if that helps at all, but yeah, that's, definitely cuts down on glare. So that's rather interesting. Um, but man, look at how, look at how thin that is. It's just that and so lightweight. I mean, this, this thing is like a brick compared to this. This is very, very, very light. Um, uh, again, let's, let's flip this over here. I, I've seen it on a couple other videos, but, but for comparison's sake, I mean, 
your USB-C port on the M1 has, I don't know if it's a couple millimeters or so, but this thing is just, it's the USB-C port. That's, that's the only thing limiting this from being smaller than it is, I think. I mean, it's insanely, insanely thin. But yeah, let's go ahead, let's get into, I'll put this up on here. Also to note, we've got our new um, center stage camera right here that's in the middle of the iPad while it's in um, landscape instead of portrait. So you can set it on your keyboard and use it more like a Mac, which hello Apple, we want a touchscreen Mac. Everyone wants it, let's do it. Um, all right, so let's open this up again. We've got our manual and this. We get a nice microfiber cloth, I believe. Uh, yes, cleaning the display. Clean your iPad Pro display only with the included polishing cloth. So this is even different than, than the Apple Vision Pro's cleaning cloth. It's, it's almost like there's a pocket of air in between it. It's, it's not the same kind of cleaning cloth that that we're used to. Um, I've never purchased Apple's cleaning cloth, but this definitely feels different. Um, I did get a magnetized screen protector for this so that it just sets on there. It doesn't actually, you know, adhere to the screen. Just it's the only thing I could find that wouldn't, you know, mess up the screen. But I, I do like the nano texture technology. Um, let's go ahead, we'll power this on here. Well, I say we'll power, there we go. Nice Apple logo, I, I love the Apple logo. I think, I know my iPhone has a sound, I'll have to see if I can find it in the settings, but have a sound. I love sounds on the Apple, you know, the Mac sound when it powers on, and there's a cool, unique sound if you dig in the settings with your iPhone, it'll have a sound when it boots up, and I'm quite sure an iPad, I actually have never looked, so I'll have to look into that. But let's keep going into this. So we've got our basic manuals and stuff, our 20 watt power supply, and a black braided USB-C cable to match the space um, gray or space black, rather. I think it, I think it's space black, um, this, our iPad over here. So yeah, that is the iPads. Um, I am just, that, look at that Apple Pencil. It, it's bigger than the, the Apple Pencil is bigger than the iPad. Whereas on this one, I mean, it, it sat, like you're grabbing it and the pencil and the iPad are about the same width. I mean, maybe the pencil's a little bit thicker, but very minimal. This one, like I grab the pencil and there's, there's no screen down there. I have to like pinch under the pencil to grab that. That is just insane. I, I cannot wait to test this out. Um, obviously very excited to check it out and see what it can do with local models. When I found that out, I was, Going a little crazy, because I've been waiting for a while now. So we'll slide this over here. I'm gonna move my iPad out of the way. Let's go ahead and open up the Magic Keyboard. Now these things are insanely expensive for what they are. I have the Magic Keyboard for um, my iPad Pro and my wife's. We got them just because it gives you that MacBook feel um, without being a full-fledged MacBook. And there are times where when we're traveling, or we're just doing work, it's a lot easier to grab the iPad and type on the iPad and typing on a screen is not, doesn't work. It's, it's not good. Um, so very interested to check this thing out. I think if I remember correctly, let's open this up here. Ooh, okay. I believe that this has an aluminum. Yes, it does. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so this has an aluminum um, hand like side. So this is very, very similar to the MacBook Air. And in fact, even in feel, it's very similar to that. Um, you've got your USB-C port here. And then I believe the little ports over here allow for a faster charging. I do not remember the exact rate, but it is a faster charging, charge rate when it's docked on here. So we'll grab this, I got a bunch of stuff here. Um, let's go ahead and grab this, set this over here and we'll go ahead and put it on there for the first time. That of course adhered to the bottom there. All right, and 
Interesting, it's weird not having two cameras. It, I, that is weird, but man, look at that. That is nice. It, it feels just super nice. It, it gives you that MacBook feel. The keyboard is a lot bigger. Um, for comparison here, we'll put my, um, I actually need to set this on the floor because I'm getting too much stuff on the table here. So for comparison on the top down, there we go. So that is the iPad Pro M4 with its Magic Keyboard and the iPad Pro M1 with its Magic Keyboard. And just, I mean, look at that. You've got more space for your hands. This is a lot smaller of a, of a palm rest um, here for the Pro M1. The trackpad is a whole lot bigger, maybe, I say a whole lot bigger. I mean, it's, it's again, maybe that much bigger on the top portion, but it just, it feels better. Um, this is, it's not that it was ever a problem with this Pro, but it definitely feels better. It's asking me to set up the iPad. But yeah, that is the all new iPad Pro M4. Let me grab my iPad Air 13 inch here. Just for comparison here, we can also look at the size real quick, because I think that that's very interesting that the iPad Air, Apple, shame on you, the iPad Air, which is supposed to be the thinnest and lightest iPad you can get, compared <laughs> to my iPad Pro, is nearly double the width. And probably, I, Maybe not double the weight, but man, it's a lot. It, it, it's substantially heavier than this. Um, but there they are. They are really pretty iPads. Um, I cannot wait to get everything set up and working with these. I'm gonna be downloading that app. We're gonna get it installed and we're gonna be running some local AI models, see how they handle it. Cause I really hope that Apple gets the drift here Everyone wants this to be more of a Mac um, type operating system. iPad OS is fine, but if I wanted a giant iPhone, you know, that's all iPad OS really is, is a giant iPhone. And I love iPads, they're great for their use cases, but I would really love to see maybe a trimmed down Mac OS, maybe like a Chromebook type setup or something where I can install real programs on this. I have access to the hard drive space. I can do something productive with this. And that's something I'm really interested to check out. So yeah, let's go ahead. I'll get the apps installed and we'll get back into the video as soon as I get that done. All right, so I've got everything installed now. I've got the apps running on both the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. And I've done some testing, really interesting and kind of excited about what I've seen so far. But before we get into that, I wanted to go over real quick. So I have like an OG iPad, the original or real close to the original. I mean, it slide to unlock and I was just kind of taking in how far we've come from, you know, this to this ultra thin iPad Pro that is like super lightweight, way thinner than the iPad Air and, but, I mean, this was what started it all, was this kind of form factor, huge bezels. I mean, it had a YouTube app that was not from YouTube and Google Maps. And it just, it, it's amazing to see where we've come from and to see the different designs of the different applications. Like this is the um, calendar app, which I think honestly, I like better than the one that they currently have. I think it looks more like a, you know, calendar book or, you know, something along those lines. I mean, messages looked similar, but different. Um, YouTube, none of this will load. So it tells you how old this is. It tells me, hey, this is way out of date. I can't do this. Um, notes looked like an actual like notepad that you would go get in the store. And let's see, I have photos here. I can't get that, doesn't have anything. We had the music app. I mean, just everything is so different, but at the same time, it's it's really cool to see just how far we've come, both in OS versions and in the iPad. 
And so I just kind of wanted to like, this is your original iPad, kind of how thick that is. I don't know if the top camera will pick this up and then hop over here to the original iPad. I think this is the original iPad Pro or the one generation right after it. Um, but you know, we got thinner. This was a 9.7 inch iPad Pro. I think this was the first one to support the Apple Pencil if memory serves. And you know, again, we got thinner. Um, looks honestly fairly close to the current iPad Pro in terms of thinness, but Apple is saying it's their thinnest device. And then, you know, we hopped over to my iPad M1 here, if I can get it off the case. So this is the M1, the first M series chip. And I'll flip this over here. It's definitely thicker than this iPad. And let's see if I can get this to work here without scratching screens. And let's put the iPad Pro here. So I don't know, hopefully the top camera can kind of pick up the differences in those and everything. Um, and then to go to from that and get over to this thing, which I have loved working with this iPad. It, it is so nice to work with um, in comparison to, you know, even my M1. And I'll tell you right here, I mean, you can, I'll stack these up here and hopefully you can see it. And we'll do that. And that's kind of your comparison. And it's definitely thinner than the original iPad Pro 9.7 inch but it's just so, so nice. And I'll go ahead just for kicks. We'll put the iPad Air in here as well. So they're kind of top down. Hopefully you can see it. Hopefully you can see it from the camera. I'll try to slide this back here a little bit. And I mean, there you go. That is, that is your iPad lineup from kind of the original, the next generation where they kind of change things up a little bit. And I mean, I don't have every iPad, but it's still cool, but yeah. Enough of that, um, let me get these put away here or put up on their stands. I'll take my iPad Pro and put it over here because what we're really here to find out is how do the new iPads stack up to AI and not just AI, local models. I am always super interested in what the compute power is on a device, how does it handle it locally? ChatGPT is great, Perplexity, these different AIs that we use, they're great, they have tons of horsepower, they do really cool things. But what does it do locally? Because in the event that you don't have internet or you can't use it for work reasons, that comes into play. That is something that we have to think about for security purposes or you know, proprietary reasons, stuff like that. Um, and so that's what I wanna find out today is what do they do what how does the m4 handle it because we you know we've seen the macbook air in a previous video and we saw how that stacked up with local models and so i'm really interested to see i mean this has got what eight gigs less ram because i'm running the one terabyte so i've got 16 gigs of ram in the m4 pro one terabyte i've got eight gigs in the m2 ipad air so this is going to be your cheaper option so i want to see you know if maybe you can't afford to get an iPad Pro, or what are the capabilities that you can run if you can't afford to get this bigger, beefier iPad? And is it worth the extra money to upgrade? So I really wanna find that out. I do wanna note real quickly though, um, I have also been using a mag like magnetic screen protector on the iPad Pro, because I have the nano um, coating screen, and I really love the screen, It it is, gorgeous. It is an absolutely gorgeous display. The OLED panel is amazing. Um, and I've been using this. If you are in the market and you do not want to shell out the extra I, couple hundred dollars for the nano coating, this screen protector, and I'll go ahead and put a link down in the bottom for it from Amazon, it's not perfect. It cuts out some of the blacks and it, it kind of messes with your picture. But if you're drawing or doing anything with a pencil and you want that paper-like feel, but you don't want to pay the extra money, honestly, I really love drawing on this thing. Um, I'm using it mainly just keep fingerprints off the screen because it attaches up here at the top so it doesn't touch the screen. And then I clean the screen real well and then put it on and then take it off from time to time just to make sure no dust or anything gets under there to scratch the screen. And it's been 
really, really fun to draw on. But um, I, I definitely would recommend if you don't want to shell out the money, maybe look at that because it works with the iPad Air. I believe they have a model for that. They work with iPad Pros. They have a lot of different model or um, versions of this. And so for, I think, $15, $20, you know, you can get that pencil paper feel and it's really cool. I was drawing the other night with it and I sat there for hours just drawing and having a great time. So anyway, let's go ahead. Let's get these things fired up here. Um, real quickly though, I am going to grab my pocket three and I'm gonna go ahead and put it facing these two because in my testing, I have crashed the iPads. I have locked them up entirely in testing the models and so we're gonna go through some basic local models that you can install and the first app is kind of just, it comes with models that should work out of the gate. It also reads the hardware that you have so that you're not putting models on there you shouldn't and sometimes it'll even warn you, hey, this model may not work with your setup. So that's kind of, if you kind of want to get your feet wet in AI locally and you're not, I don't know, you know what to do, Though that app is probably really good for you. But the second app that we're gonna try out is more, a little bit more in depth. We're gonna get a little more in the weeds with it. Um, not too far, but we're gonna test that one. And that one allows you to go up to Huggy Face or any site that you can get an AI model from. And as long as it's a .bin or a .ggf, I believe it is. I'll have to look in here, we'll confirm that. Um, you can download it, import it to the app and then show you a couple things on how that runs and it's really cool. So I downloaded a coding app that is a lot like VS Code for the iPad and I was really, I had not seen this app before. I looked for VS Code a long time ago and apparently I just haven't been watching the apps and let me see if I have it on here. Oh, this is all of my apps recently added. That's the problem. Okay, so let me just, Go back in here and see what this app is called. So it's called Visual Code. You know, Visual Code, VS Code. Um, there it was. And so you can pull that up. You can create a file in here. Um, as you'll see here, we've got JavaScript files, Python, uh, Swift, C, C++. I mean, you've got a lot of different languages. Nowhere near what VS Code is, but if you're on the go and you need to do something and you're coding, this is not a bad little program. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it's completely free. Like there's no subscription, there's no paid tier, which I hate and also understand, you know, programmers have got to get paid, but it does suck sometimes because you're like, hey, I don't want to pay, you know, a monthly subscription to have an app. I'd like to just pay one time and be done. But yeah, this is a pretty cool app. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the next um, app, AI on device. So this is the one, again, this is more for somebody who doesn't necessarily know a lot about AI, doesn't know a lot about local models, and you wanna get your feet wet. You wanna try them out, and maybe you're scared of getting into something like GitHub and, and mucking around with, you know, pulling files down, stuff like that. This is going to be a really nice user interface for you. Uh, you go over here, you hit the gear icon, you scroll down, it's gonna give you the models for your selected device. So one thing I noticed, so I have the M1, and I noticed when I downloaded it on that iPad that the models that I was seeing on both the M2, the M4, and the M1 were just ever so slightly different. So like the iPad M1 was lower uh, storage capacity, which tells me that the model is smaller. You can kind of tell when a model is like, for instance, this one right here, um, is the tiny llama 1.1 billion parameter and that's like 0 0.78 gigabytes. So that's a really small model. And so you can always kind of tell how big the model is by how much storage it takes up. Um, you get into some bigger models and you can be a 50, 100 gigs plus they go up, you know, and they also need more RAM the more that they, the bigger they get. So that's where you're seeing this here. And I, it was interesting to note. So again, if you have a small, um, a, slower iPad on an M1, or you maybe you have an M2 iPad or the I M2 Air, um, it's going to kind of throttle you and keep you in a safe area, right? So we'll go ahead. Um, I have Mistral. I love Mistral. This is a 7 billion parameter. It's the one that is already selected. So we'll go ahead and go back there. 
you'll notice your system prompt up here is already filled in for you. It's your helpful assistant, provide concise and accurate responses. So that's really cool. You don't have to worry about that. And so again, I'll just type a simple hi, we'll see what it does. And I'm gonna try return again and it, yeah. So for some reason, even the keyboard on the iPad, you'll notice there did not hit enter on these apps. I don't know why that's a thing. It is a little annoying. You have to hit the little message send icon thing. And so this says user, the AI is thinking. So there you can see on the camera, the M4 was definitely faster on the response. Same model, if I remember correctly. Let me double, double check here. Um, actually, that was code, Llama. Let me go ahead and make that. Let's make this a, a fair test here. So let's go back. We're gonna do the exact same test again. So I'm gonna reload this model, new conversation. Yes, so you hit the little circle icon, you reload the page per se. And we're gonna go ahead and hit high again. And we're gonna go ahead and send that in both models close to the same time. And in this case, Oh, this one already had it loaded. So in this case, the M2 is a little faster, but it takes time to load the model into memory. Um, who is the president of the United States? So we'll do that. We'll go over here again. Who is the president of the United States? So we'll go ahead, we're gonna hit send as close to the same time as possible. And the M4 was just ever so slightly faster, just like a millisecond faster. Again, this is a smaller model, that's kind of to be expected. I've got more RAM over here, I've got a better processor over here, it's gonna be that way. Um, but again, look at that, hey, it's got Joe Biden, he assumed office in January 2020, I believe is what that says. So that's really cool. Um, so let's go over here real quick. We're gonna do a quick code test just to show a bigger model. So that was a seven billion. Let's see Llama Q Chat eight billion. So we'll go up just a little bit um, and we'll check, check this out. Um, see, so if you'll notice there, over here on the M2, uh, it says this model might exceed your device's capacity. Would you still like to proceed? I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. Um, but you'll notice on the M4, it did not say that. That's because this model is probably pushing that 16 gig, 12, 16 gig range. And this is running 16 gigs. So it's like, yeah, I can handle that. But again, it, it just warns you this might not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm, go back here. Now, one thing I'm gonna do before this happens, just to save where we're at thus far, I'm gonna go ahead and pull down here and we're gonna save the screen um, recording. There we go, make sure that saves, because if I crash the iPad, I wanna make sure that I have that recording. So, we will now hit record again. Three, two, one, swipe up. All right, now, this is going to have to load. Let me just remember which model I hit here. So, Llama Chat, okay, so this is just a chat. Cool, we're just gonna do that. Okay, can you give me the game of Snake in Python. So we'll just see how that does. Uh, can you give me the game of snake in Python? Cool, so pretty much the same prompt. Neither one of these models have been loaded into memory, so we're going to see what they can do. And remember, the iPads are screen recording and running just these apps at this time. So hit that, and they're both AIs are thinking. Let's see, and the M4, look at that. It loaded the model and it didn't give me anything. And the M2 is still typing. So it's probably gonna crash. My guess is this will crash. Um, this model did not, do so, it did not give me any output. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that one more time. Can you give me the game of snake in Python? So let's see if that will do it. Notice over here, there we go, now the M4 caught up. So just a glitch or something. But if you will notice, the M2 iPad Air is handling us 8 billion parameter local model. And now it's gonna go for a while here. I'm not gonna let these run through the whole thing. But I mean, look at that, the M4 is done. Um, update the screen, that's pretty cool. So again, you can take this, I believe, 
you can copy this. Let me get the uh, code file up here real quick. We'll put Python there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and command V. Look at that, and it let me put it in. That is awesome. So you can copy and paste from here. The M2 is still going. Um, again, it's a slower processor, less RAM. It's going to be slower, but if it's all you can get, that's not bad, right? I mean, I would have loved to have seen this be an M3. We have M3 MacBook Airs. I don't know why not put that in the iPad Air because you put it in the MacBook Air, but it's Apple. What do you want? Um, especially since we jumped to an M4 over here. But yeah, it's still going. That's pretty cool. I kind of honestly surprised that it did that. But this app is not bad if you are looking for just a simple, straightforward, you come over here, I'll show you one more time, you click that gear icon, and these are all the models that are available. So you can download these models, you can mess around with the temperature, it'll tell you like the randomness of the output, higher will be more creative. So you can raise that temperature up, you can lower it down if you want. Um, you can force the model to load in RAM. Now, I don't select that because I also want to use that GPU. I want to pull from that power in the GPU because especially here, I've only got eight gigs of RAM. That's kind of a bad idea if I just forced here, only load in the RAM, it probably would have crashed the device. Um, and then desired perplexity, you can do middle, say higher number of results could be um, confusion, uh, lower maybe re uh, repetition. So that's not bad, if not sure, keep in the middle. I've left it in the middle had no problems as you saw it printed out pretty okay, except for the little hiccup over here. So that is that, that is AI on device. That app is really cool. I highly suggest if you wanna dabble around in AI and you wanna have a few more models than the MLC chat app. All of these, by the way, are free. They do not cost money. There's no paid subscriptions to them. Uh, I don't know the developers. I'm just super happy that they put these apps out and that I could grab my iPad if I needed to do some coding and maybe I didn't have access to internet, I'm on a plane or I'm traveling or whatever I'm doing, and maybe I can't get to my MacBook Pro. And so I have an option to ask a few questions if I want to, because it's kind of like Super Google. Honestly, AI it, to me is Super Google. You go to you know Stack Overflow and you'll spend hours looking for an answer that you may not find. And sometimes AI is the same way, but sometimes it'll give it to you in the first try and you're like, hey, that really helped, thank you. Um, so anyway. Let's go ahead, let's close these out, and let's head over to my favorite app. This, by far, is my favorite um, local model app, and it is called LLM Farm. Now, you can get into the beta, uh, or I say the beta, you can get into the uh, test version, basically. So there's like a, a test, a future release test, and that you have to run through test flight locally on the iPad, and then you can just download the app on the App Store, which is what I did. It's the stable version, probably the best way to go. But something that is super cool about this is that you can load external models. So you can put the models you want into this app. And once you do that, you hit this little plus icon up here and you will uh, be greeted with this screen. Now up here you have title, you can select that. Your title, you can name them, or you know, put numbers, or whatever you wanna put up there, it's your title. And you can also give them cool little emoji or little icons. So each model, up to a certain point, obviously there's not infinite amount of them, but you can kind of look at it and go, hey, that's you know that weird looking cat, or this is that future looking raccoon thing. You know, they're kind of cool, honestly. And you can title them, so let's see here. Let me, let me go ahead and pick a model. So you, you go over here, you select your model, and so let's try um, Phi 3 Mini Instruct. Let's just start with a basic model. So I'm gonna click on that, and right there, it'll auto-populate that field. Now you could delete that and add whatever you want. I tend to just leave it with what it populates, right? There's no reason to fix it if it isn't broken. Uh, let me see if I have the Phi Model 3 Mini Instruct. There it is, Phi Model 3 Mini Instruct over here. And now, this is very important with this app. This is where we get a little bit more in the weeds. Um, if you go down here into prompt format, you do not have the prompt auto-populate for you. It doesn't put that in there, it'll just say prompt. And if you do this, I'll go ahead and do a test here real quick. Um, it is the most random stuff that comes up I've ever seen. It's laughable 
at times, uh, what it comes up with. One time it was talking about some girl uh, off in the desert, and then the other time it was telling me how to cook a pie, and I ask it, hi. Uh, <laughs> it's literally that random. So, but you wanna make sure that when you do this, aside from the prompt, you select metal, so you're gonna use the GPU inside of your iPad, and you're going to do mlock. Now, I'm not exactly sure what mlock does. I've tried to find documentation on this. There's not a whole lot out there. So, uh, you know, I'm assuming mlock stands for memory lock, but I don't know. So don't quote me on that. So anyway, we do that. We've got that there. Everything else you just leave as is, special, BOS, um, and you don't touch EOS, at least in my experience. Um, you can select Llama as the interface, that's fine. Go ahead and hit add. Now, we know that that's the mini instruct and that does not have uh, any prompt. Now, watch it make a liar out of me, but I'm gonna go ahead and say hi over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say hi over here. And again, we have to hit the little message send icon. And both models are, this model's loading, this one is already thinking. So again, if it's not loaded, I'll show you something as soon as this gets done that you might have to do with this app. Um, but let's go ahead and let it load. There, if you have any questions about how to create web page or want to learn web development, I'm here to help. Just let me know what you need assistance with. Uh, with. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd be delighted to guide you through the process of creating a web page. It is now gone off on an entire conversation with itself and printing a web page, and I ask it, hi. Um, so very, very important that you put the prompt in there. Now, the prompt for these models can usually be found, and this one looks like it's done. Let me go ahead and stop it. Uh, that one apparently will not load. Um, let's close this out. You'll notice over here on my left, if the screen recording hopefully doesn't crash, that this app is having issues. I'm gonna go ahead and check this one. And notice the M4 has no problem at all. Um, the M2 did crash there. That was a mini model. That was not anything beefy. Uh, this app definitely has more stuff going on. So if you're running an air, you're probably gonna be on the AI on device, but I have gotten it to work with local models. But real quick, let me pull up what you need to do. So you go over here and I'm gonna use um, the M2 here real quick, just to show you. So when you download these models, you'll come over here to the um, huggyface.co. You need to have an account on Huggyface. You cannot download models. You can't do anything until you create an account. So you're gonna have to go through that. Um, but once you have it, it's very useful. So I like the bloke, tend to have really good stuff. Um, also really good documentation. That, that is key to this. And I really like that they provide that. But you will notice down here, that it says prompt template. Now this was for the Wizard Uncensored um, Llama 2 13 billion, and it is GGUF, that is the format, .GGUF, and I will show you real quick here. So when you log into the web page, you go over to models, you load that up, and you will see your tasks, libraries, data sets. Go straight into libraries, and you will see all of the different libraries that you have, PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX, all that. We don't care about any of that. We're running on an iPad. We're not running on any kind of beefy, you know, PC or Mac. So let's go ahead and run GGUF. And that is going to give you all of the models that are that format. Now I have not found bin files yet. I did notice that there are some app, or rather there are some AIs in here that you can install and muck around with on your Mac. So you might be able to pull them down and create a bin file and then put it in here. Cool, uh, I haven't done that yet, but if you get the chance, let me know in the comments. I would be really excited to know if you could do that. So I've only used uh, the GGUF file format at this point, just easier. So let me go ahead and show you. So I mean, the 16,875 models, you're gonna find something you wanna use right here. Um, so you go through like Gemma, Google Gemma, two th our seven billion parameter here, or oh, two billion, I'm sorry, correction. And you'll notice running the model with the CPU, it's gonna give you all the information, but a lot of these guys do not give you, let me see, does this give it to you? Nope, not yet, not yet. So I'm scrolling here super fast. Um, yeah, so they're not going to give you the prompt that you need. Now, 
If you have a model that you have already used and it has a working prompt, I have put it in and it does seem to work most of the time. So maybe not all of the time, I've not run into it where it doesn't, but you can go to another model that has a prompt and put it in, especially if it's a similar model, and it will run and, and load the model. But you come in here, and let me scroll up here real quick. So you're gonna go to Files and Versions, and that is going to give you the different, um, rather, sorry, this is the wrong one that does this. So some of them you go to Files and Versions, and that will actually give you the files that you need to download locally, and you pull those on your iPad locally, and you're good to go. And others down here, I think we actually passed it earlier, um, yeah, there we go. So this is going to give you 2 billion parameter. It's gonna give you the different models here to download, um, as I recall. Let me go ahead and go back over to the bloke because I know I can trust what they have and show you a little bit better. Uh, so back here, there we go. All right, so you go here, you have files and versions. I would click on that and you'll notice here, I've got a five gig version, I've got a 13 gig version. Um, of the uncensored Llama 13 billion parameter. Uh, so and then you'll scroll down here, you would grab this prompt and you would paste that into the prompt thing. And we're gonna go ahead and show you that real quick. And that way you kind of get to see that working or you can also just scroll down and some of them will have the requirements and the actual models further down in the page. Like this is saying max RAM for uncensored here for the five gigabyte size is seven gigs of RAM. So theoretically that would work on your iPad Air. Uh, but then if you go up, you'll notice that you get up to the 13 gig. Notice I said the bigger the file size, a lot of times the more RAM it takes. And that one's pushing your 16.33, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, basically. Um, and so let's go ahead. Let's grab a model here. Let me see which one we can do. So I have find 34 billion... Um, Let's go ahead, actually, we were at the uncensored one. Let's go ahead and try that. That is a 13 billion parameter model. That, I think I downloaded the bigger file size if memory serves for both of these. So every one of these models is running the same. I downloaded them, pulled them down to iCloud, and then just transferred them over to the next iPad. So they're running the same when it says find or whatever the model is, it's the same exact thing. All right, so scroll down here, you'll notice here's this, um, you are a helpful, respectful, and honest assistant. That's gonna be our prompt. Let me make sure I have this one over here real quick. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Find 13 billion, there we go. And again, it puts it all in there. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to, let's see, let's do the mouse. Let's go ahead and put it as the mouse here. And prompt format, you're gonna take this and you're gonna delete that prompt. So you're gonna go in here, prompt format, and you're going to delete the prompt there. And let me swipe back over here real quick. And I tap on this, there's a copy paste there. You swipe back over and we're going to paste that in. So again, paste that in there, you are a helpful assistant. So now I'm running the same model on both of these. And let me make sure that I'm actually on the right app. Okay, so there's that, we go down again, make sure that your predictions options are set to metal and mlock on whatever device you're using and we go ahead and we add those models. So let's go ahead and let's start with the new model. Now this is a 13 billion parameter running on the M2 with eight gigs of RAM and on the 16 gigs. Now I do not expect to have a problem on the M4 at all. I expect to have a little bit of a problem on the M2. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're gonna give it a simple high. This is just a basic response. Let's see what it does. And it's gonna have to initialize the models and one thing I may have to do, and I forgot, I said I would show you, sometimes if the models will not load, you have to close the app after creating them and then reopen it. And it kind of like reinitializes the model. But you'll notice here, it, the M2 actually responded faster in terms of with hello, but the M4, look at that thing go. I mean, it is just going to town. Um, let's work together and have a respectful conversation. I mean, that was a lot out of a simple high, but cool. I mean, in the M2 is still going here. So I can load it, but I'm gonna wait a really long time to get what I want out of this. Um, 
you're gonna want to run something more like an 8 billion parameter on the M2. I, I just, I've tried 13 and I'm gonna push this. We're gonna, we're gonna go up from here. Um, but I've noticed that the M4 just beast modes through these things and some that I was really shocked that it got through where the M2 is like, yeah, no, I can't handle that. I'm, I'm just not designed to do that level of work. So let's go ahead, let's say, let's stop this. Um, we've tested this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and load up another model, but a bigger model this time. And let's go to the, where's my uh, code model? I had a code model in here that was really cool. When I used it, there it is, find code llama. Yeah, there we go, find code llama. Let me go ahead and grab this over here real fast. Put this up, find code llama. Now this is a 34 billion parameter. This will destroy the M2. That's kind of the intention. I, you know, I like testing things, seeing how far we can push them. So again, we're gonna go over here to this prompt. We are going to delete the prompt here. And there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead, this is super simple to type out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say curly bracket and the word prompt. Um, if I could spell prompt, um, let's make sure I'm spelling that right. P-R-O-M-P-T, there we go. And curly, close curly bracket backslash N. There we go, that's all we gotta do. Luckily over here, all I have to do is copy and paste. And so let's test this thing out. I, I was really impressed with this. I ran it on the M4 the other day and I was blown away by some of the responses that it gave me for the code stuff. I think this was this app. It could have been the 13 billion, but I'm fairly sure it was this one. Uh, so let me go prediction here. Again, metal and M lock. Make sure those are selected. Let's go ahead and change our avatar for this model. I'm going to make it the... I don't know what that is. It looks, I guess, like a fly or something. All right, go ahead and add this over here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and for this, I'm going to close the apps out, kind of show you what I was talking about. So you swipe them up, you completely close them out, and then you reopen them. Now the model is still gonna have to initialize, but it should have loaded it a little bit better. So now we're gonna give it a little bit more of an interesting prompt. Hi, could you give me a Python function that prints out the prime numbers from zero to 100. Now, I'm just using basic stuff, uh, you know, nothing too complicated for these, theoretically. This should be easy for them to get. Um, so again, let's do the same thing. Now let's see what happens here. So we're gonna hit enter. I fully expect the M2 to die completely, and I'm, Pretty sure the M4 will make it, but let's find out. So there we go, they're loading. Notice the model didn't have to load at the top there um, because I closed the app and I loaded it up. So over here, the M2 has stopped spinning. The M4 has now stopped spinning. Now, one thing I did not test when I did this before, I didn't have screen recording on. So that might be an issue. Um, all right, oh, that's still thinking about it. Now this is a 34 billion parameter model. I believe the required RAM for this was like 22 gig, 24 gig, something like that. It was pretty low and the M2 crashed. There we go, we lost screen recording over there. And the M4 is still trying. It's definitely not got it down pat, and there we go. All right, M2 has crashed completely. I lost the screen recording on that one. So that's awesome. Uh, luckily, we have the pocket here and I can get this recorded. Uh, let me see here, the M4 is still trying. It's not crashed yet. I am impressed that it hasn't completely said, pound sand, I'm done, I'm not supposed to run this. Um, that's kind of what this 34 billion parameter was a test to do, is like how far can we push this? So we know that a 13 billion parameter runs with no problem on the M4. Um, however, on the M2, it struggles and is slow, where an 8 billion parameter, it's like, yep, I got this, you know, don't worry about a thing. But again, the M4 is still, it, it's at least trying to load it, which is impressive in and of itself. Like, the M2 just said, I'm out. Peace. We're done. 
uh, where <laughs> the M4 is still trying. Um, I don't, oh wait, 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 wait. I got a this, okay, here we go. And remember, this is running the screen recording as well. So it's handling both the screen recording processing power, which probably isn't that much, but it's still processing power. And it is running this app with a 34 billion parameter. Now, I don't know if it's gonna get past this and what it's gonna do, but the fact that the M4 iPad can even load this is just insane. This is an iPad. So with my, with my test with the M3 MacBook Air, I was really impressed at how well that did compared to my MacBook 2 Pro. I mean, sorry, my um, MacBook Pro M2 behind me. Like it was running 16 gigs of RAM, that's my MacBook Pro, and you know, pretty much the same processor. And the MacBook Air was keeping up with it. And I would dare say at this point that this M4 iPad is fairly close to keeping up with the M3 iPad, I mean, sorry, the M3 MacBook Air. Um, and it's loading, it hasn't crashed. I am I am super impressed with that. So this dot current equals, interesting, it's giving me dot notation. So it's got that it's code, I mean, there's that. Um, and I guess it's assignment operator, not equals. So. Let me go ahead, I'm going to try the a different model over here while this one is still going. Let me actually go ahead and restart screen recording here, see if it'll handle that. And let me see, I, I don't think this one's at all got anything right, but it's still loading. I'm, I'm still impressed that it's still going there. So this is the 13 billion parameter. Let me go ahead and I think I'm gonna stop this one here in just a second. So I'll go ahead, I'll load the, the 13 billion parameter one. Actually, hold on a second. Let me get the, where is it at? 13 billion, 70 billion. Where's my uncensored one? Uh, 70 billion, okay, there it is. So I'll go ahead and load the 13 billion code llama instruct over here. I'm gonna go over to the web page again and this was the 34 billion. There's the 70, okay, we'll have to try that. There's 13 billion llama chat, 22. And just to show you, I'll go ahead and use this prompt here. Um, you are helpful assistant. Again, you can put probably anything if you understand how to format the prompts and everything in there that you want, but if you don't, it's a lot easier to just follow what's on the Website, uh, let me go ahead and paste this in here. There we go. Unbiased, blah, 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 mlock. And okay, so I will, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a different one so that, uh, we'll make it the teddy bear. There we go, angry teddy bear. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me close this out real fast, just to make sure that that's there. Reopen this, we'll do the 13 billion code llama. Uh, give, me a function in Python that prints out the prime numbers from zero to 100. I'm gonna go ahead and sit that and let that go. Over here, I don't know what code or fine code llama is doing, but it's not working. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that and you know, it works. Um, it could be the prompt that I put in. Maybe I typed it wrong or something. That could have been part of the problem. But hey, it worked. That is impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and actually save that screen recording because I am shocked that that didn't just completely kill my iPad. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and try a 70 billion parameter on the M4. It will crash. I, I will make this thing crash. I have to. Uh, so let me go ahead, plus a model in here. Let me find my 70 billion parameter. Where is it at? Find code instruct. There it is, llama3 70 billion uncensored. All right, now we know this one over here is still loading. And yeah, pretty much, I would say if you're running an iPad Air M2, the new one, um, you're gonna be running an eight, billion parameter model on that. I wouldn't go above it. 
It doesn't like it. Uh, it just, it, you might get a little bit over that. Like if you could find a, I don't know, I've not really seen a 10 billion. Usually they're like eight and 13 and so on, but eight billion parameter, you'll probably be fine. So chat GPT 3.5 type responses, you can run code llama. There is a uh, eight billion parameter code llama. So if you're coding, you know, you're good to go. Um, also, I highly recommend just as a side note, get a keyboard uh, case for this, for any of the iPads. It, typing on the screen is good in a pinch, but if you're trying to do any kind of real coding or any kind of even this, it's suboptimal. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead, uh, that's crashed. All right, so I'll go over here real quick. To wrap this video up, let me go ahead and the iPad is angry. Here we go. There we go. All right. So let me go ahead, scroll up here. Where was my 70 billion? This was 13. There it is. What this? It's still angry. So it's still not having a good day after what I did. Okay. So this is the 70 billion and this one did not have, that's right. This one did not have a, um, a prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same prompt and I'm just going to put it over here. So let me delete this here real quick. And I'm just going to copy from over here. You are a helpful AI assistant and make sure we do that. Right. And I think that was another space. Yep. User. And this is very important when you're doing this stuff to make sure that you get it exactly what it says to put in. Um, or you will have problems, eh, not a backwards curly, uh, yeah, open curly brace, a close, and let's do a sys, right? Yes, assistant, make sure I spelled everything right. Okay, and put my colon there. All right, so let's go ahead, let's put prediction in here, let's put mlock, memory, there we go. All right, for the last model of the day, Let's put, I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> let me go ahead and stop the screen recording here on the iPad Air. And let me go ahead, I'm gonna leave the screen recording here. I've got that, it's llama, cool. All right, add. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out real fast just to reload the model. That's just kind of refreshes it a little bit. It's a quicker way of doing things. And we're gonna give it a simple hi. Let's see what it can do. Let's see if it will crash the iPad. And so, oh wait, I hit enter, I'm sorry, I'm used to, and this one for some reason having to load. And hi went through, it's loading. I will say, I don't remember what model it was in my testing, uh, but it locked the entire iPad up. I had to force restart because I, it was completely unresponsive and it was in a uh, reboot loop. So. Something to keep in mind that can happen. If it happens uh, to you, hold down the uh, power button and the up volume button, and that should force reboot. And I have the number six. I don't know how it got that out of high. Again, I don't have probably the exact prompt that this is looking for, so keep that in mind. If you can use other prompts, but it may not work with that model. So that's just something to keep in mind. It may not work. Uh, however, this has stopped spinning and I think, nope, it's still alive. So that is a 70 billion, ah, there we go. Yeah, all right, 70 billion parameter crashed it. So again, that I don't remember exactly the RAM usage or, or uh, requirements rather for that, but it's a lot. I, I know that for this, it's a lot. 16 gigs of RAM was never gonna do that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're running a 16 billion parameter, the M4 can handle it like a champ. Um, if you're running, what was I running? The, the 38 billion parameter? It, it at least printed something out, uh, you're gonna wait a while. However, if you're on an M2 iPad Air, you are definitely gonna wanna not push anything over that eight billion parameter or eight gigs of RAM. You know, stay very tight into that. That's, that's kind of where you have to be. 
But yeah, that was awesome. That is the M4 iPad Pro, 13 inch, one terabyte, um, with 16 gigs of RAM. The iPad Air M2 with eight gigs of RAM, also one terabyte. Uh, whichever one you're in the, you know, whichever one you're looking at, you can't go wrong with them. They're good tablets. There is nothing wrong with this tablet. I have really enjoyed the iPad Air. I will be sending it back. I love my Pro. I love the nano uh, texture screen. I, I really do. It's awesome. If you're into art and even just drawing a little bit, it's really worth it. Or if you want to save a couple hundred dollars, I'll put the link in the bottom. This magnetic screen protector, awesome too. Uh, great experience to draw on with a pencil. Uh, so if you're, but if you wanna save a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars, the iPad Air, not a bad pickup. Um, you can run some models with it. You can run that app that I showed you, uh, Visual Code. You know, you can do some coding with it, get a keyboard case and you've got a yeah, mini laptop. Hello Apple, give us a full OS on this, on iPad. iPad OS is done, let's move on. Um, but if you're in the market and you have the money, the features of the iPad Pro, um, just, they're amazing. It, it's thin, it's super lightweight. I was, again, drawing on it and I, I just, I didn't feel it as much as I do my 12.9 inch. Um, the screen resolution and quality is awesome. It's right, it's just, they nailed it with that. Um, and then, yeah, you, you can run local models on your iPad. So that has been my review of the iPad uh, Pro 13 inch M4 and the iPad Air M2. Both are great machines. If you are like a couple generations behind, you know, maybe a, an original iPad Pro, or maybe you're coming from an original iPad, or maybe the M1, uh, I would highly suggest the jump up to the M4. That is my personal recommendation. Um, but if you have an old iPad Air and you wanna run some beefier stuff, maybe you're into coding, into running local models and tinkering around with stuff like that, M2 is not a bad iPad. Uh, definitely an interesting thing to me. I did not think it would run anything and the M4 completely blew me away. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry that it was a little long. Uh, when you're working with stuff like this, you know, you kind of roll with what happens. But if you did like the video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. It helps me out. Um, check out the links in the bottom. I'll have the screen protector there as well. And some other things that I have here on the table that I use that I really like. I tend to only put things down there that are useful and that I have personally used. And until the next video, we'll see you next time.